What's good everybody and welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today we're going to talk about how to develop the different colors you see in an illustration, photograph, design, whatever. And to do this I'll be using a little color testing sheet with several pictures of the Jordan 1s. Throughout the video I'll give each of these Jordans a different color and explain the different methods for developing a color scheme for illustrations, designs, photos, or whatever it is you create. To color these I'll be using my color pencils. I'm using a mix of Arteza and Prismacolor brand colored pencils. Then later on in the video I'm gonna give you guys a short tutorial about coloring with markers. So let's zoom in on one and get this video started. One way you can choose your colors is by referring to the color wheel. In terms of color theory there are color schemes that are developed using the basic color wheel which I know we've all seen. If you have it here's what it looks like. The color schemes I'm talking about include complementary, split complementary, analogous, triadic, double complementary, and monochromatic, which I'll talk about later. The most common color schemes are complementary and analogous. In addition to using color schemes, oftentimes I like to use contrast, which refers to the use of opposite elements in just about anything. Complementary color schemes use contrast, but I'm also talking about using colors with a light value and a dark value. Value is how light or how dark a color is, in case you don't know. In design, if I were to use a light orange and a dark blue or a dark orange and a light blue, that'd be contrast of both colors and value both working together in a design. And the same goes for all complementary color schemes. Another way to use contrast would be to use colors with a light value and then color a small area with a color that has a dark value. But I have a whole video talking about how to use contrast and different kinds of contrast that's been used throughout history. So links to that video will be up in the card so you can check that out if you want to learn more about contrast. Another way to choose your colors would be to keep it monochromatic. If you don't know what monochromatic means, it refers to a color scheme that uses tints and shades of one color. In my case, I'm using a blue as the shoe's initial color. I can use that plus a darker blue and a lighter blue all together to make a monochromatic color scheme. My recommendation for monochromatic color schemes would be to keep it balanced when it comes to value. My initial blue would be about 50% on the value scale, so if it's desaturated, the gray wouldn't be too light light and it wouldn't be too dark, it'd just be right in the middle. The two other colors would be of use, but there'd be an equal use of both, which means there's balance in the overall design. However, if it just so happens that your darker color is used all throughout your design, that means you want the dark color to dominate the overall design, which is also an option. Another way to choose your colors would be to keep in mind that all colors have definitions. This might be surprising to people who have zero knowledge on color. If this is you, just know that all brands, logos, companies, and even your favorite cartoon characters have or wear certain colors that can instantly tell viewers about a character. For example, the color yellow. Yellow symbolizes energy, optimism, and creativity. Take the Best Buy logo for example. Best Buy's logo design in 1966 was a yellow circle with a black swirl and a black outline. The yellow symbolizes the progress and energy of a developing company while the black symbolizes the power. Also the color wheel is split into two categories based on temperature, warm and cool. Warm colors will be on the red, orange and yellow side and the name really speaks for itself. Just looking at those colors gives you a sense of warmth. The same goes for the other side where there's lots of cool colors like green, blue, indigo, and purple. When you're also thinking about designing, especially for a cause, think about what each color means. Let's say you want to create artwork for a design for a breast cancer awareness month. The color for breast cancer would be pink, but all the other kinds of cancers have different colors which helps prove my point. So what I'm doing now is applying my own set of colors to my own design of the Jordan 1s. I'm using the colors of my HBCU, Bowie State University. Right now I'm just applying the school colors throughout my design. I'm planning out the colors now and then when I show you guys how to color with markers, I'll throw these same colors into my final design. 
All right, and here's what the Jordan ones look like now that they're all finished being colored. So now what I'm gonna do is take the colors from this specific shoe and apply them to my final design. And like I said from the beginning, I'm gonna be using those same colors to show you guys how to color with markers. So what I'm gonna do for this section, since my design is mostly yellow, black, and white, I'm just gonna show you guys how to color one section with the yellow, and then I'm gonna time lapse the rest of the drawings so the way you can see everything with all its colors. And like usual, I'm gonna be using my Copic markers. The colors I'm using are Y15, Y35, and Y38. So I'm gonna zoom in on this section, show you guys how to color with markers, and then I'm gonna time lapse the rest of the drawing. So let's go. Okay, so when you're coloring with markers, you wanna start off with a base color. That's gonna be your lightest color in the combination of colors that you have. And then you're gonna need your mid-tone. Your mid-tone will be slightly darker than your base color. And then you're gonna need your darkest color, which would be darker than these two. And once you add your darkest color, you would have developed a good amount of shades. So let's start off by applying our base color, which again is Y15. Just color in that section. Okay. And then let's go in with my mid-tone, which is Y35. I'm just gonna work close to the contours of this section. And as you can see, this color is slightly darker than my base color. And I'm applying multiple layers so that way I can get it a, at least a little darker. Like that. And now before we transition to our darkest color, let's go back with our base color and blend that together. All right, and as you can see, we do have some blending action going on. But now let's go and add our darkest shade, which is our Y38. And let's apply shades along this side. And just like I did with the Y35, I'm building up on layers. So I'm applying this to the same section several times. And you're starting to see more of a difference between our first two colors. Okay. And now from here, we can work backwards. So we already applied our darkest color. Now let's go back with our mid-tone, Y35. And then to finish things off, let's go with our base color to blend everything back together. And there we go. So let me zoom back out so I can show you guys what that looks like. And there we go. We got us a good looking blend. So I'm going to apply this same concept to the rest of this design and finish it off. So let's go. All right, and that's how you color with markers. And here's what this same design looks like after rendering it into Photoshop. In addition to that, there's many different ways to choose the colors in your design, illustration, or any work of art you look forward to creating. And I hope any of these tips were helpful in any possible way. Also, let me know if you can find these online somewhere because I just might have to grab me a pair. But with that being said, that's it. That's all I have for you this week. If you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video.